Hello and welcome to the latest Voice of London Great Britain show on ALB UK television with me, Ian Pelham Turner. And me, Helena Shard. Today we talk about what is going on in Ukraine. This is day six in what was only thought by Putin to just be two days before the whole of Ukraine would fold under. So the whole of Britain today is so upset with what is going on in Ukraine at this present point in time. The reality is right now is that this is genocide. This is war crimes. And now even the War Crimes Commission in The Hague are starting to look at what is going on because the use of barrel bombs, as they have been called in the past, that really are there to cause maximum amount of civilian casualties are starting to happen in the country today. This is not some Russian situation trying to preserve their security. This is really a situation that has to be stopped. The people of Britain feel that in these days we must, must support Ukrainians as much as we can. Today, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson has both been in Lithuania and in Poland, really talking about what is going on at the moment. The EU held a special meeting this morning where rounds of applause were held for several minutes when the Ukrainian president came on to actually talk about what was going on in the country right now and his plea for Ukraine to be allowed in to actually become part of the EU family. So. Helena and I both support Ukraine and I'm sure a lot of people in Britain, including Albanians as well, support this situation where we cannot allow Putin and these criminals in Moscow allow them to actually thrive and survive. Over to you, Helena. Thank you, Ian. Um, that's great. I mean, I, I also want to just mention a little bit about uh, Ukraine. Um, I think at times like this, it's really, really important to manage our media diet. And I know that lots of people have been asking and, uh, you know, what's going on and they're quite fearful. Um, and there's also, we have to remember good news at times like this, because it's an important parcel, part of really the war, um, the positive stories. And it's quite hard really to think, gosh, really, is there any positivity? But uh, the fact that people are, you know, coming together is, is, so empowering and um, the royals are talking about it as well which is very unusual because normally political things the royals do not talk about um, the duke and duchess of cambridge uh, they put out um, a, a lovely piece they actually met uh, president zelensky recently and he was talking you know he's such a powerful guy talking about how the country was growing and what they were hoping to achieve um, and they were saying you know that they stand by by him and the people um, which was uh, which is great also prince charles i think today has mentioned something he was talking about david arness so commemorating david arness and at the same time talking about that being attack on democracy and freedom itself um, and comparing it to, to, to the brutal events um, in the Ukraine. So very unusual, but powerful that's happened. I think the everyday person, you know, has come together. Everyone in the West has come together. That's something that's, you know, quite amazing, really, something that's slightly positive that can come out of Putin and, and this awful situation. Um, just all meeting together. Everyone's trying their hardest to donate, to, you know, be charitable, um, which is also good for everyone to do. It makes everyone feel better. 
Um, and the world is standing in solidarity of Ukraine, uh, which is really, really heartening. Um, I, it's just lovely to see the volunteers. Um, I've, I've actually personally got a friend, his name is Peter, and he's going to be working on the border in, in the border of Poland, where they've actually built a temporary hospital. And he was telling me yesterday all the things that are in place, which is, again, I mean, people are just being absolutely amazing. Um, I think on top of it, uh, we have some other positive things. I think I'm very pleased to hear that the 13 men that were thought to have been killed on Snake Island when they were being so heroic, taking on a Russian warship, um, complete heroes, they in fact, uh, they were just taken captive at the moment. So hopefully that's an, again, a positive story. And lots of people who have platforms, and we, we have a platform, it's really important to talk out, everyone to speak. Um, and so many people are doing that, which is keeping everything alive. And Elon Musk, uh, Elon Musk, obviously famous for so many things. Um, his satellite internet uh, service Starlight is actually active in Ukraine. So now there is Wi-Fi and that was a, a plea for help there. And he got that sorted, I think, overnight. I mean, he always has exciting things that he um, works towards. So that's really good. So there are lots of high profile people uh, trying to help as well as the everyday people. And I think people are asking, you know, what do we do? What do we do? Well, everyone can help, um, whether it's talking, whether it's donating things. There's lots of charities out there. Um, UNICEF, we're going to be showing something shortly. Red Cross, Save the Children. So many platforms that people, people can access. Um, donations of clothes, you know, covers, quilts, you name it. Um, it's really, really needed. Um, and I think we all have to carry on here in the UK. It's uh, St. David's Day. So it's a day for all things Welsh. Um, it's also Shrove Tuesday. So it's Pancake Day. So everyone, I think, should share the love and make lots of yummy pancakes. Thank you. And as Helena was saying, at the moment in Ukraine, children are dying. Children are being held in underground, uh, really, situations that are suffering from cancer. This cannot be allowed to continue. And as Helena just said, basically we're now going to show a UNICEF charity video that talks about Ukrainian children and how we can support UNICEF and how they will support Ukrainian children. Меня зовут Маша, мне 9 лет, я живу в Красногоровке, у меня все хорошо. Кушать у нас есть, пить у нас есть, сахар у нас есть, все есть. Только дров не хватает. Буржуки, когда у нас есть, ну вот эти мы дрова пособираем, закидываем, оно горит. Например, в 10 запалили, в 11 закончили, вода нагрелась, еще и мы купаемся. В наш дом 4 было прямых попаданий, так что мы боимся. Человека даже осколками поранило, забрали в больницу с шестого подъезда соседа. Так что мы тоже боимся, у нас много деток. Деваться нам некуда, нас никто нигде не ждет. Когда вырасти, я хочу найти работу такую, чтобы мне помогала людям, которые бедные там. Gosh, that's uh, really quite heart-wrenching, isn't it? And it is. so Univer um, UNICEF is the world's leading organisation working with children in danger and actually works in over 190 countries. So really is, I would say, the go-to charity to, um, I don't know, to, to donate, fundraise, campaign. Um, so yeah, that was great, wasn't it? It was. And, and, I, and I think the reality at the moment is um, nobody including both of us want to see children suffer in this way at all 
this is war crimes let's not call it any mm. other name but war crimes that uh, rockets are raining down on children at the same time so now we're going to take a very short break and then we're going to bring on one of the most influential women in Britain today Mercy Gilbert <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the second part of the show. Now we are, have the greatest pleasure in welcoming Mercy Gilbert to the show this afternoon. And before I start, this is what Mercy does just in some of her activities. I've never seen a full scat page of so many activities that this young lady does. So welcome this afternoon to the show. Thank you, Ian. So first of all, uh, we're going to go down this list of all the things that you've done. <laughs> this may take yeah. some time, folks. <laughs> this may take some time. So we're going to start off. You've just been re-elected as chairman of Petswood and Knoll Conservatives. So tell me about that interest, first of all. Yes, um, I did um, an internship in Parliament. It's always been a desire of mine to be an MP and after having done the internship we were asked to join our local constituents um, so that we can get involved in the local politics but when I joined the same week they threw me into the deep end and <laughs> elected me chairman <laughs> so um, and here I am five years later re-elected and I actually enjoy it I've done more than most chairmen have done in my five years I've done the general election, I've done the mayoral election, I've gone through Brexit, and I'm just about to go through the local election. And you survived. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you survived. Yes. That's amazing. Gosh, amazing. Oh, thank you for joining us and congratulations. Thank you. Um, so also, you're the ambassador of the Legacy Foundation. Yes, I am. And I've also been given an award as well for my work, as you saw that I, I do quite a lot of um, work in the community. Um, basically, the Legacy Foundation is a foundation that um, tries to give back to the community and tries to empower the community in different sectors, in education, in uh, care of the elderly, better care of the elderly and um, training such as um, training using a furniture that is old and getting it revamped and so it can be resold and um, healthcare, teaching healthcare and having affordable health um, uh, care to the community that people might otherwise not be able to afford. We offer that on an affordable basis. Another initiative that um, is in North London, we have a hub which is called Wakanda, where we have a studio, a, a centre for the community, that the community, especially the BME and working class, can come in and do different variety of things within that hub. We're looking at the moment of starting one in Bromley, um, where we can offer such services to the community because we believe um, the community is lacking that, especially young people. Um, we work with um, prisons and um, women and young girls. We, we work across the board um, with the Legacy Fund, also with, alongside the Job Centre as well, in um, getting back employment to, to the community. You're obviously steeped in uh, really working with good 
uh, initiatives, good foundations, good charities as well. How did you become president of Clapton Football Club? <laughs> Um, that is almost a similar story to my chairman's story. I turned up um, at an event as a journalist to report on the African Nations of Cup UK. And I, I followed that and they, they always seemed to pick me up and said, um, the chairman is not available uh, for this event. Can you take over for the day? And I found myself running the African uh, um, Cup. UK, which I, I wasn't really used to football then, um, and I actually loved it, and that led to other work in football, and to, to be headhunted for this position of vice president because they felt that I'd done a good job sitting on other boards with the Nigerian team and the Zimbabwean team who I work closely with as well, and these are the UK teams for Zimbabwe and Nigeria. So that's how I got on to being the vice president. <laughs> I just had, I have this vision of you with a bubble <laughs> hat and a scarf and a rattle cheering on. <laughs> yes. Um, the good thing is um, because um, uh, of being a woman and there's been a growing, um, steady growth of women footballers, the chairman looked at me and said, I would like to start a women's football club for right. you. So we're in the process of starting a women's football club as Goodness. well, um, which will be really, really good because that is growing and really, really fast. I thought you were going to say for a second, you're captain now. <laughs> <laughs> I used to actually be just, very just to fit good in at between at midnight and six in the morning. <laughs> wow, good footballer as well. Yes, yes. In my in my days, I would be the only female playing football. I was, yes. Were you? <laughs> good for you. Yes. Excellent. Exercising. Well done. You should yes. take it up again. Sorry? You should take it up again. No, you wouldn't yeah. have the time, I don't think. Yeah. I don't think you'd be able to fit it in. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, I'm curious about Hera. You're an ambassador of Hera? Yes, Hera is a global organisation. We have 10 million women and we have various amazing women who are ambassadors. We, we have um, former presidents, former special advisors, um, former prime ministers of different countries. We have royals and we don't just have um, women, we have men on the board as, as a <laughs> no, no, sure. as well. <laughs> men who support women. Um, it's an organisation where we want to build a women's city to empower women and then to encourage women into things like uh, engineering and uh, areas that women aren't normally in and to also um, just celebrate womanhood but it will be for the whole family not just for women and we've actually secured land in Morocco and wow. we've, we've got some funding at the moment and we're looking for more but We've got quite a lot of interest in, in, in the funding and I've played quite a big role in bringing funders for the project, which I'm pretty wow. excited about. Um, my role, um, we're also holding a festival where we're going to have a music festival, global music festival, celebrating womanhood of musicians from all over the world singing songs that have been written by one of our, our partners to empower women, celebrating womanhood, um, because women contribute a lot in societies. Um, women, as you know, <laughs> um, a lot of the countries that are doing well are run by women. Um, unfortunately, um, in the Conservative Party, there's only three MPs at the moment in London who are female, um, but that is why I'm an ambassador for women's, um, uh, for HERA, uh, women's organisation. But I play other roles in that um, I interview various women who've done extremely um, amazing things from all over the world and um, just allow them to talk about their journey and how, what imp inspired them and some of the challenges they face so that other women can can be encouraged with that um with with, with that and um that i saw the video of um <laughs> my event i held in parliament in the house of lords um which was in collaboration with our ambassador in brazil 
where we run an event uh, to economically empower women. This was a global event for 18 days. Um, we we um, looked at different areas. We looked at smart cities. We looked at um, women in Africa. We looked at fashion. Um, we, we just looked at different uh, areas for 18 days and had panel discussions of people who were specialists in those areas. Um, so we can try to not just um, discuss situations, but also find solutions and also then say this time next year, we're going to see how we've done in offering those solutions and bringing together funders and uh, solution providers. So um, that is one of the things that HERA has done, brought it, bringing women together to, to um, change the world. That's just so inspiring and I love that solution focus. Fabulous. Thank you. Well, we've worked on your schedule from midnight to breakfast time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's carry on now, <laughs> shall we? So, 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 so this is breakfast to lunch time now. This is just filling up your hours. Yes. So, so you've done this uh, female Afghan national team at the Olympic Stadium as well. Another football thing. So, so. Yes, yes. I'm working um, with a wonderful guy called Drew and he runs Futsala Football. Um, it's, it's a sport started in Brazil again. Brazil seems to be a good place. <laughs> um, it started in Brazil and it's, it's a a women friendly football, um, form of football, with the ball being a little bit softer and it doesn't bounce. But um, we're trying to grow it in the UK. So we, we um, are hosting an event in June, 9th and 10th of June, um, for, with the Afghan national team. And that will be televised on ITV. And um, we, we just think that it's going to be an amazing event to empower women and to show that um, these women are amazing with all that happened in Afghanistan as well. Gosh, 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 gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, it's so making, I think I need some glucose up. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's We're really only halfway it. through. <laughs> So, and also Legacy Football Academy. Yes, Legacy Football Academy is both here in the UK and in Ghana. We have um, we've started an academy in Ghana for disadvantaged young boys who, and, and we, we are going to move to the girls later on, but at the moment it started last year for young boys who are off the streets or from disadvantaged families who aspire to be footballers but they do not have the resources in order to get into football me being a mum of four boys i've tried to get my boys to do football and a lot of people will know football is a very expensive sport to try to get your children into so we formed this academy that is um, a charity academy so that we can get these young boys into teams in europe and in other countries but the idea is to train them and hopefully you'll see them one day playing professionally. Okay. And moving on, because <laughs> <laughs> there's only so many hours in the day at the moment. <laughs> well, you, you also run a presidential candidate consultancy. So tell us about that. Yes, I do. Um, I started that at the beginning of lockdown and um, we just in the UK came out of lockdown last Thursday and um, at least it gave me a lot of things to do to kill time during um, lockdown. But um, we decided with my business partner in Nigeria to start a, a, an organisation called Alert Africa to um, change Africa. But we realised in order to change Africa, you needed to start from the top um, ra down. Rather, So that's how we decided that um, the leaders are the ones who run countries. So we needed to put good leaders that could um, change the country and transform the country. So we began to look at the uh, sustainable goals and we had certain tick boxes for these leadership candidates that we wanted to, to bring into our books. So I've got eight at the moment um, and uh, we've got um, some very good ones in Nigeria and Ghana that I believe um, could be the next president of those two countries, the elections next year. Gosh. Um, and the Leadership Academy, is that part and parcel of what you were just talking about? Or is that se separate? That is completely thing? separate. <laughs> <laughs> now, why did I know that? 
Um, <laughs> tell us more. Tell the us leadership. More. I, I, I totally believe um, the future, what COVID taught us is that collaboration is very important. So I've got many people that I collaborate with in different uh, ventures that I do and the Leadership Academy is just another uh, venture I started during lockdown. Um, the Leadership Academy is an academy where um, we do lessons coming back from my training in Parliament, um, my internship training. Um, myself and my business partner who was the former Special Advisor to Theresa May, we discovered that um, when we meet uh, leaders from abroad that they don't have enough skills in leadership and in, in, in the way of dealing with various leaders in the same way that we have training here. So we decided to set up this leadership academy. At first it was for um, governments, but then we found that um, even businesses needed this leadership um, uh, course. It wasn't just leadership, it's also elocution lessons as well. And it, we, we uh, look at the different companies and organisations and we tailor it to them. So we, we've done one recently in January with delegates who came from Nigeria and we're in talks with a, a university in India and, uh, and in America and the Caribbean as well. So it's, it's growing steadily and it seems to be something a lot of uh, countries are wanting. Yeah. Yes. Gosh, that's really interesting. And he said, <laughs> <laughs> casting his eye further down the list, <laughs> you, you've, you're starting a partnership with, with a university in India to teach online courses. So tell us about that now. Yes, um, the, all these things sort of tie in together because uh, it started off with the um, captain football club that um, s somebody approached me and said they would like uh, to have a match with our football club and that person happened to be in India um, and um, I said yes that would be a good idea so I spoke to my chairman and said someone in India would like to have a tournament with our club um, what do you think and they said yes that was a brilliant idea so um, we've organized that for the summer a tournament um, and that tournament is actually in honour of somebody very special and dear to myself and also to, uh, to, to Ian, um, um, Philip Chan, who, who um, we lost, because the person who um, is in India was connected to me by Philip Chan. Okay. So we felt that in honour of him, um, we're going to do that uh, tournament and, the, and it will be a yearly thing Great. and the trophies will, be, will have Philip Chan's name on them. Great. So yeah. that also then tied into the fact that uh, Philip was doing some work with education with them and I'm heavily involved in education. So the same person said, would you like, I run a university, would you like to partner with the university and uh, lecture? And I said, yes, um, it's something <laughs> I've always wanted to do. <laughs> so yes, um, we're now doing partnership and um, not just myself, other people will be lecturing that I'll be um, bringing on board to, to have a, a programme with the university in India. Gosh, it's lovely to hear about Philip Chan as well. That's really, really Absolutely. heartening, isn't it? Isn't no, that he's great? He's a great friend of the yeah. two of yes, us. In fact, yes. of the three of yes, us, I know. Yes, yes. So that's really great. Um, women's Network. Women's yes. Network. <laughs> yes, the Women's Network um, came about that um, I know so many powerful and amazing women and we keep meeting via Zoom, teleconference, um, in different places and somebody said Mercy you know so many amazing women why not form a, a network of women who are all alike because it's very difficult to find women who are not not uh, gossiping and women who are focused and who want to change the world and who are at the top so I just decided, okay, <laughs> it's time. It's been a long time coming. So um, we unofficially started in January, but we are starting officially next month. And um, we've got already a lot of amazing women who've come on board um, from Bar head of Barclays, head of HSBC, uh, head of the Arab world. Um, so many amazing women. Yes. <laughs> yes. Amazing. 
Thank you. Uh, I mean, it's, it goes on, folks. We haven't finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's the African British Business Forum. <laughs> Yes, that too. It's something that I've been doing for a very long time, is connecting people um, with Africa. I have a lot of people who approach me and say they want to do business in Africa or they need contacts in Africa with African governments. I know a lot of presidents and governments I'm connected to. And um, I found myself in that position of being the link between the two. So uh, a friend of mine said, you know, you do this all the time on, <laughs> on a daily basis. Um, why not form an organization, an, an official organization? So this is the birth of that official organization and network where people can come and network once a month with different people, funders and people who same this, share the same vision to empower Africa, I hold events and I have one coming up um, soon, an, an investment for Nigeria in partnership with the UK trade and industry, where um, we want to help Nigerian uh, businesses and government um, to know how to uh, package things properly when they want to send food over um, in, as in, in trading and all sorts of aspects. So I find that when people want to trade in, especially a country like Nigeria, um, they're a bit weary of who to approach on the ground. So in having this trade mission here, we have reputable people that have been screened who will come to UK and meet with funders and investors and then at least they know that their money will be safe. Yeah. Mm. Um, and also the African Africa Day Peace Federation, the events management side, you're also involved in that, I believe. <laughs> yes, yes. We are doing the investment um, uh, um, event with, in conjunction with um, the Peace Federation. And um, <laughs> they know I do a lot of events. So they said, oh, mercy, <laughs> we're holding, we, we normally hold an annual event, Africa Day event. Um, would you mind um, hosting that event for us? I think you'll be quite good at that. <laughs> so, yes, um, I said, I will. Um, I love anything African and to empower Africa. So um, that's, that is going to hold and we want to make it very exciting, have African drummers, African dancers, African musicians. Um, so watch this space um, <laughs> for the date and, and venue for that. Excellent. Now, close to my own heart, we're both <laughs> journalists. So, so tell me about uh, the types of things you do in journalism at the moment as well. Okay, at the moment um, I'm co-owner of a newspaper, uh, the Southern African Times, and I'm also a freelance journalist for a couple of publications. Um, and a, a recent one is the Western African Magazine. Um, I'm a, a co-editor of that. So with that, I cover a lot of issues, mainly in Africa and also here, celebrating unsung heroes and trying to just help people who are in business get on the map. Because I've, I've, with my background in media, as you know as well, it's difficult for people to um, promote themselves. Most people don't know um, how to grow their businesses and having a background in business and having been successful and won a lot of awards in business. I know one of the biggest things um, for businesses to, to do well is media and publicity. So that's what, what I do mainly is to use that space to promote people and their businesses and what they're doing. Brilliant, brilliant. We're all journalists. So also a great mentorship that you offer um, for people wanting to get into politics. Yes, yes. I've been doing that for a couple of years. Um, we, although now we're going to start it on a bigger scale, one with young people, because I've had a lot of young people, especially just before lockdown, interested in politics. And I think after a lot of the things that went on during the pandemic um, globally, a lot of young people have um, began to have a lot of interest in politics. So they've been approaching me for that and to mentor them. So I've started that with young people 
and um, was also started within the BME community and disadvantaged background, a, a, a programme that we're in the middle of setting up at the moment where we help people to get into various positions, councillor positions, special advisor positions, um, uh, chairmen like myself, and to know the difference and the functions of these positions because it's quite difficult when you come from these uh, backgrounds to get into politics because most people who are in politics is normally hereditary but um, in, if you, and, and also who you know as well becomes important. So because of some of my connections and uh, my business partner, um, we have strong connections within Parliament and in number 10 we, we're going to use that to assist people to get into politics wherever they want to get into. Gosh, it's really <laughs> exciting. It's so good. It's just, it's, I love it when, when we have guests, especially like you, and you, you teach us so much. I love it. And it's just been so empowering. Um, so thank you. Absolutely. It's been really, really rewarding. I've loved it. And, and I think, you know, Helen and I are both uh, broadcasters and journalists, uh, along with yourself as well. And we've had to learn a very simple word called no. Have you ever said no to anything <laughs> you've been asked to do? <laughs> um, actually, for the first time, I think in the last few months, I've started having to say no because <laughs> it's, it's become very overwhelming um, that people hear of the work that I do and um, how effective it is. Um, but I'm picking my... my um, the thing that I love doing the most is helping disadvantaged people and women and especially areas of education. If it ticks those boxes, those are the things I give priority to. Is there anything you haven't done yet that you want? I've got a feeling <laughs> yeah. this is... Go to space. Go to space. I am actually about heart. to go uh, to, to learn to fly, which is something I've always wanted to <laughs> do. Yes, a friend of mine who's the first black um, a, a pilot to fly around the world, um, he's promised to give me uh, uh, flying lessons and to take me flying soon. He's just recently got his uh, plane in January. So I'm excited that it's going to be something I haven't done yet. <laughs> oh, something spectacular yes. as well, isn't it? Yes. And you obviously support a lot of charities. Just talk very briefly about some of the charities you like to support as well. Okay, um, you put me on the spot now. <laughs> I support um, issues mainly, as I said, in, in education. Um, and there's, there's a charity I sit on, which is very, very sad, of young girls in Nigeria where um, they're picked up um, by different government officials and rich people and offered money so that, and these girls take the money because they want to be able to pay for their education or for sanitary uh, towels. Um, so for me, I'm supporting that charity for uh, uh, period poverty where we're going to be giving sanitary towels to these young girls and we also help the girls to, to get into education. So I'm bridging a gap with them with education, setting up a, a, um, a school for them in Nigeria, which I'm also doing with the Universal Peace Federation. Um, that is something and we're also doing that in Burundi as well. Gosh. Mm. Yes. God, so much. I mean, you probably don't want people to find you, I'd imagine, but I just wonder. <laughs> I, have, I, you do. Is, I have a whole lot of wonderful people who work with me and support a lot of the things that I do. And um, so it doesn't become too much. So I think for me, that is very, very important um, to have a, a network of people who share the same vision as you and help yeah. out. Absolutely. So I'm privileged to have that. And yeah, that's good. I think we've been blessed to have you this afternoon. Uh, you know, really I, I've, I've never known a lady, apart from Helena, who does yeah, so hello. much with so many different <laughs> causes. Oh, that's amazing. As her. So well done, and thank, thank you so you. much for your time. I mean, how how can people contact you? Would you want? Oh, do you want? Best thing? <laughs> As what I was saying, you probably don't want to contact me on my Facebook, Mercy Best. Or they can contact me on my email, mercy415 uh, at iCloud.com. Or they can contact me on my Instagram, um, which is mercytv1. 
Uh, yes. So you, yeah, you're yes. contactable. Or Twitter, great. which is Mercy Ehosa, which is quite easy to find. Or LinkedIn, uh, Mercy Francis on LinkedIn. Brilliant. Yeah. Do you find you get a lot of voicemails? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I do. Yes, I do. But I've, I've got now a PA who who's helping me yeah. uh, sort out a lot of my admin. So That's life has got a lot easier. Oh, you've got <laughs> a great support network. Well, I, oh, I think thank time you so has much. caught up with us today. So thank, thank you. you so much for your time. Yeah. Have you got some last thoughts? Oh, no, just I just really, it's been so empowering. I just, it's lovely, isn't it? I love learning things. I just love learning new things. So um, thank you, Mercy. Thank been you. Brilliant. Thank you, Helen. And thank you, Ian. Thank you. Well, that's another show wrapped up um, today. And so the, for the Voice of London and for Great Britain on ALB UK television, um, another show next week. Um, I can't promise to have the same list of uh, <laughs> opportunities as we've had today. It's going to be another good show. You it's know been it. fabulous. And thank you so much for your time. Thank it's been you. great. So from Helen and myself, have a great week hopefully we will have better news for you regarding Ukraine next week. Take care and stay safe. Bye for now. Bye for now.